third day of October 2023. I'm your boy, Dana Durnford, also known as nuclearproctologist.org. And then anybody watched yesterday's show knows uh, I'm feeling good. So I slept last night. I missed the show last night, the premiere for the first time. Slept for 12 hours. I got up every hour. And I'm just going to do a short video. Not going to be a premiere tonight. Just so we can get something out there to counter the madness. Perpetual madness. What's mad is... Uh, there's four of these buildings. That's Reactor 2 and Reactor 3. There's four meltdowns. And they say Reactor 4 didn't melt down, but that sure as hell looks like a meltdown to me. And then at the top of each building was two fuel pools. Each fuel pool was stuffed past capacity because you don't have a repository anywhere. And it could be upwards of five or more reactor cores. And the reactor core that was in Reactor 4, and that's the Medusa Reactor 3, mixed oxide fuel, the MOX fuel, the reactor four, they were changing the fuel, which meant at least around two thirds of the fuel was still in the reactor. And so that would have aerosoled pretty quickly. Um, in 2019, there were 105,000 storage sites, 105,000 sites like these, 105,000 with 30 million one-ton bags that we know about, and some estimates are 60 million, according to Al Jazeera. I'm not going to play that clip today, I don't think. Their grown food right alongside the one-ton bags of radiation. Very disappointing. Uh, and 14 prefectures, the bigger prefectures, were all banned by 55 countries for a decade. And those people that implemented the bans were replaced with the pro-nuclear community. And now there's only, I think, 14 countries with restrictions on those 14 prefectures. You should never lift the restrictions, obviously. On July the 13th, a professor from South Korea, a very prestigious uh, institution and academic, at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering, Nuclear and Quantum Engineering, came out with the official cover story for the Asian nations that 1.3 million tons stored in Fukushima plant included approximately 2.2 grams of tritium. By the way, I counted the tanks. We only got 750 in the best numbers, the counting the small ones. And there was 1.3 million tons of water, they claimed. There was 30 million tons of one-ton bags. And nobody's ever said that was tritium. And he said that the discharges is equal to throwing three grams of sugar into the ocean. Three grams of sugar. This is a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering. I'm not a professor of nuclear quantum engineering, but I do know this much, and so do you, I'm sure, when you look at it, that there's nothing left, just stumps. And those stumps of reactor three and four should have been razzed to the ground. There's no logical reason to keep them, unless you were trying to build a cover story, and that's what they apparently done. And that they're going to release 0 0.062 grams each year from the alleged 1 million. Hang on here. And just so you can kind of wrap your mind around it, remember there's 30 million one ton bags of radiation. And so if you release, uh, by the way, here's re um, media claiming they're at the fuel pool above whatever stump you want to call that to the left, which that should have been razzed to the ground. There's no functional reason to keep it there. They kept it there so that they can pretend like the right, just a fraction of the Western media, that the building is actually not intact, that it didn't blow up, that it's not razzed all the way to the ground. So they built these contraptions and then pretend they're in the buildings and they never left America. America has 70 identical reactors. And so the two buildings, if you stack them on top of each other, are not as tall as that top bar right there. And that top bar right there 
is the bottom bar right here. And the fuel pools were at the very top of the building. And just want to, and I apologize to the regular viewers, but we have to do this every time to make sure everybody's on the right page. There was two fuel pools and the reactor cores are at the top of the buildings. And there ain't no top to the building. Um, so, obviously, media is the last person you're going to want to trust. And that's pretty disappointing, I'm sure, to most people. I hear you. So there's a big story that came out today as the catalyst behind me doing this video for everybody tonight. It's about diabetes. It's about diabetes. And by the way, uh, what they're saying they're going to release each year from a thousand tanks would be equal to dividing that kind 16 times and taking one of them and saying that's all they got out of these buildings in 12 years. So you're in very, very real danger. And just because you might be on the other side of the planet doesn't mean you're going to be safe from radioactive fallout. And there's enough information out there. You can only live in denial for so long. I'm drinking lemon, chunks of lemon, and lime extracts, liquid in about a spoonful into a glass with a lot of ice, and that's working to calm down my throat. Uh, but uh, the other, if the mucus builds up, I'm, I'm, I'm in real trouble. <laughs> and it's, we'll get through half an hour, hopefully. Study from Fukushima shows even low doses. Study from Fukushima. Study from Fukushima shows even low doses of radiation may contribute to diabetes. Ooh, they're going to get some trouble for doing that. <laughs> um, this was just released. Studies suggest that the exposure to low doses of radiation may contribute to increased risk of diabetes. Think about the uh, weapons fallout just in America from their, where they radiated their whole country so that the Russians wouldn't do it to them. And that's called a war, right? Same, same amount of radioactive fallout. <coughs> but that study of diabetes we're going to tackle in a second. Uh, but there's another study that I want to show you. This was, just, I'll just show you a fraction of it. Came out uh, in 2019. Came out in 2019. And that study was congenital heart malformation, congenital malformations heart. So basically it was 14.2% of the population in across the entire country, congenital heart diseases, you know, complexities, heart development uh, issues. 14.2% increase in the number of operations per 100,000 live births for neonates and infants. In other words, for every 100,000 children born, 14, it was 14,200. I got I to gotta update that one at some point. It was 14.2%. 14 14,200 children each year of every 100,000 live births, and I think there's um, a lot more than 100,000 born there each year, despite they have a falling birth rate, of course. Uh, got nothing to do with perpetual radioactive fallout, I'm sure. D these numbers are, are inconceivable. They're actually inconceivable. Um, not bad numbers. You've got to have open heart surgery when they're born or they'll develop all kinds of illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries and illnesses. A study from Fukushima shows even low doses of radiation may contribute to diabetes. I'm just going to flash to this and hopefully we'll cover it better next time because my, uh, my throat is pretty tickled. Like it's really sensitive for me to do this much talk and I'm finding out. Health involved more than 6,000 out of 20,000 emergency workers, uh, which would have been, the majority of them would have been homeless and destitute and the victims of society. 
from the Fukushima Diachi nuclear power plant event, which we cover typically five days a week here for over a decade. Substantial amounts of radioactive material were released into the environment. Well, I mean, what, what side of the fence you on? Substantial amount. They've lost around 10 million pounds minimum per building. That's okay, we'll just, let's go along with the study here. Substantial amounts of radioactive material released into the environment, and few human studies have examined the impact of radiation exposure on diabetes development, and the low-dose radiation exposure risk of diabetes in 5,326 male workers. The average age was 46 years old. They were putting out calls for people who don't mind dying, remember? And 16 older should be prepared to die at the Fukushima plant. Uh, we covered a lot of that stuff over the years. Individual emergency workers' radiation exposure was measured using a pocket alarm dosimeters. These are not very accurate, but they do give you some indication for external exposure. Now, why would you only study, you know, and a whole body counter for internal exposure? That you can't quantify it that way, though. But at least you get, you know, some comprehension. But you're still missing the big picture of how radiation works by doing that. 392 between 2012, 2021, in nine years, developed diabetes. That's a stunning number. That is stunning. That is unbelievable numbers. I just. Um, so top 20 U.S. newspaper, the world's food chain could be compromised. So the whole world might be susceptible to that facet of radioactive fallout. I want you to appreciate. And another study that they seem to miss, uh, Japanese radioactive children, radioactive children. This is new scientists who are pro-nuclear, as you get, by the way, will be fine. Thyroid glands are only emitting 35,000 microsievers, 35 millisievers. Each millisiever is 1,000 microsievers. And claiming that anything under 100, now, you don't measure microsievers and millisievers. You, you would normally measure in physical atoms, atomic decays per second, which is Beckwell's. It's pulse of energy almost at the speed of light. Here's a blast from the past. Six in 10 Fukushima children tested have diabetes. Six and ten. It's 2012. The head of the Tokyo area medical clinic. We're expecting diabetes in children from the Fukushima radiation, right? So the other study was studying the workers, but but so there actually is studies, and the numbers we're seeing are beyond anything we've ever heard tell of or could conceive. Hopefully, I'm pretty sure they knew this was going to happen. Radiation health specialists, children with 11 beckles a kilogram start to see heart problems. 11 beckles a kilogram. So you can put uh, 200 million beckles on the head of a needle and can't see it. So imagine how small 11 of them are. And you can't perceive it or smell it or taste it or hear it or feel it or touch it. And that the so-called regulatory agency, which turns out not to even be that, they're not a regulatory agency at all, admitted there's no such thing as a safe level of radiation, that the standards that they're using are based on natural stuff, not man-made. So the International Atomic Energy Agency has hoodwinked the entire planet in the most horrible way, the most horrible betrayal imaginable, or not even using real standards. Irreversible heart damage for children with 50 beckles a kilogram. Ir irreversible heart damage for children with 50 beckles a kilogram. Uh, 50 beckles a kilogram in adults lead to irreversible lesions in the vital organs. So j we're talking tiny, 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 completely barely detectable amounts with very sophisticated equipment are catastrophic to the health of humans, so what's that gonna be like to the insects, the birds, the mammals, the animals, and everything else, which are infinitely more vulnerable? 
cancers or illnesses, heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline. And then there's mental health, real mental health issues, and not from phobia, but from dementia and autism and diabetes and Down syndrome and schizophrenia, just to name a few. And another study showing 35.8% of the children, 13,646 out of 38,000, had thyroid tumors, and the thyroid tumors were two centimeters. The thyroid gland is only three centimeters by five centimeters. So you got an absurd amount of documentation. You got studies on massive uh, thyroid tumors in the children. You got 50 becquerels a kilogram in adults lead to irreversible lesions on their organ organs and children's irreversible heart damage. And that the international energy standards are based on natural, not man-made. That 11 becquerels a kilogram and just cesium. You can't just have cesium, by the way. You start to see heart problems. There's six and ten Fukushima children with diabetes. And there's a lot of children with diabetes. The world food chain could be compromised. And that's because there was 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. Not everybody was diagnosed. Forty-five percent of kids in Fukushima that had thyroid exposure to radiation. Up to 50 millisieverts per year equivalent for one-year-olds. That's 50,000 microsieverts. Think of a microsiever and a minimum numbers. Um, at 100, or the most, I'm not sure, it's around 150 becquerels a kilogram for some isotopes that we're worried about. So 150 times, um, it's just a mic per microsiever. So 150 times 50,000, because there's uh, 50,000, there's 1,000 microsievers and a millisiever, and the microsievers equal to about 150 becquerels, atoms, physical atoms. It's very unhelpful to use the, the millisievers, microsievers, because we're talking about fallout. And so that's how they cover up the damage and uh, the significance. So not just cancer, it causes heart diseases, strokes, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, burns holes through your lungs, the children's lungs, ends up in their bones, mutates their stem cells. When it gets into the species, thyroid glands, and the numbers we're talking about are extraordinary. There's no way it didn't. It mutates uh, their hormones forever and ever. The very lowest levels of radiation are harmful to life. You've got to rethink exposure levels from nuclear disease factories. Oh, just got to make it another 10 minutes or so. <laughs> I'm afraid to raise my voice because I'll cough myself into oblivion here. And Fukushima has humanity on the brink of a possible worldwide nuclear holocaust. And the world as we know it has changed and that the effects on our health are incomprehensible. Well, it's, it's an extinction event. France says Japan has lost control to French to leave the country. Top cancer doctor, nuclear radiation, most carcinogenic thing that exists. So there was a lot of people originally speaking out, wasn't it? But that stopped after, well, it didn't stop completely after about four years, like I was just about to say. But the time we got into six and seven years, it was very difficult to find any dissenting opinions or voices. And by uh, 2017 or something like that, I think that was the end of it. We never heard any descending voices in the last six, seven years. How low doses of radiation causes heart diseases, strokes. And disinformation by nuclear proponents, but pro-nuclear lapdogs, the, the jackals, the, the cowardly jackals, try to confuse the public about the effects of the external, internal. You can't get external without getting internal, unless you don't breed air at all, ever. Uh, but you can still absorb it through the rain, through your clothes and skin. And then by proxy, child's risk of cancer from radiation, now there's 1,800 diseases besides cancer. Your immune system gets compromised right away, so your body is more susceptible to pathogens and viruses and, and things. 
child's risk of cancer is 100 times, probably a thousands of times worse for a child than an adult with the same exposures because the child is developing, right? And so the hormones being affected and um, the mutated stem cells are a catastrophic event for any species, you know, including the human. Officials sharply raised the radiation levels to get the iodine pills 75 times higher than the World Health Organization recommended. That's genocide. That's 100% genocide we're talking about. We're talking about literally the cruelest thing you could do is deny people the ability to even take a freaking pill. We're raising 75 times higher than the crazies already have it, which is WHO, which is UN. <coughs> I think I might be having a problem with one of my cables. I got an extra one there. I'm gonna try to remember to change it after. NRC wants radiation exposure limits 100 times higher than the EPA. We didn't need Arnie Gunnarsson to tell us that. That information was everywhere, but that's what he quoted. And I really disrespect Arnie Gunnarsson for what he done. He, as far as I'm concerned, he should be locked up for life a minimum. He probably should get the death penalty for legally, of course, for what he done. Of course, I can't talk about it, but I've shown it to you now. It's stunning how much stuff I got. It drives me crazy. So, let me check the volume first. I'll adjust it in real time if there's... Because sometimes when I record this stuff, because I put his video in the fuel pool of Reactor 4. Um, the Unit 4 was, um, uh, was damaged twice. It was damaged by, by a st all of the earthquakes that occurred, and it was also uh, damaged by a series of explosions over um, the first week or two of the, of the accident. So the, the, the building is structurally weakened. Now Does the building look structurally weakened to your left? <laughs> it was a 19-story, 50-meter. Uh, it was more than 50 meters, 190 feet tall, 65 meter. It's 150 feet wide, 50 meters wide. It's completely, just, it's, it's a nuclear, it had fuel pools at the top of, for goodness sakes. It's, it's multiple nuclear reactors melted down. Now, Tokyo Electric's acknowledged that. They went in. Now, there's zero, it's zilch, zero possibility somebody went in there. And what makes this incredibly heinous is Arnie made the racks for the fuel pool assemblies, so he knows what's what and what's not. And so he definitely knows it's all gone. In, uh, in May and June of last year. So when you look at this depiction, what you can appreciate is there is no building. The building was 190 foot tall and the reactor cores were at the very top of the building. This is more than a year ago and put an enormous number of extra structural supports directly under the fuel pool. So the fuel pool is at the very top of the building. There's no building. How can you put structural supports? And so Arnie, of course, he made the racks for the assemblies for the fuel pools. Surely you can trust him, but you just heard it with your own voice. And there's many like that. Uh, Helen Caldecott, Christopher Bush. Keep the bottom of the pool from breaking through. <laughs> it's completely gone. And it's terrifying that that is considered acceptable for someone to do that. That That is... It's truly terrifying that people have done that. Swiss Embassy evacuated Tokyo. Korea calls Japan's handling incompetent. Reactor 3, the Medusa, actually ejected the reactor cores from the fuel pools. You're talking about 10 reactor cores getting tossed out of a building at catastrophic speeds. The explosion was filled 25 miles away and that models of the emissions based upon venting, not based upon the actual um, inventories or the loss or the actual meltdowns, shows it covering the entire planet in 26 days. And we have academic studies quantifying that assertion. Nuclear report warns of an apocalyptic scenario at Fukushima. This could one day be considered the start of the ultimate catastrophe of the world and the planet. This could one day be considered the start of the ultimate catastrophe of the world. As the public, possibly worldwide, sickens over time, the truth 
will come out about Fukushima as the public, possibly worldwide. Okay. I might throw calm down for a second. We'll finish this out, maybe. And remember, the ship in f each prefecture is producing around a billion pounds of food that were banned by 55 countries. They didn't stop growing it, and they didn't stop shipping it. All right. So we got studies showing a million becquerels a square meter in North America of xenon-133. A study shown 20 million particles of radioactive iodine, 131 per liter sustained radioactive fallout from Vancouver, British Columbia. We got studies from Ottawa, Canada, 220 million atoms. We got all kinds of isotopes and studies quantifying the fallout. This is not an opinion. These are not conjectures. So I launched research expeditions from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska. And uh, I was considered the worst person on the entire planet for doing this. I done it year after year for six years, and my findings are incontestable. They're unassailable documentation. It was based upon actual documentation. This was a typical day. And here's what we discovered, was that the species to your left are exterminated. And we went back year after year to quantify that to see if they returned and repopulated the coastline, and they didn't. And I was stalked and harassed. I was dosed. My address, pictures of my home, my vehicles were posted online with uh, stuff and s tried to incite people to hurt me or even kill me. I was told on when I was getting ready to sail out the harbor to head up for four or five months and the research expeditions that I was going to get kidnapped by the hellhounds and that they would use a blowtorch on me if I didn't stop the expedition right now. Of course, I went on the research expeditions and I paid a horrible price now for over a decade for doing this. Have my reputation completely destroyed. They have destroyed, absolutely destroyed every facet of my name online. You can't research my name without finding the most horrible, vile, wicked, and cowardly uh, attacks upon my character. It's absolutely revolting. And they made a mistake because I'll never go away now because they've done that to me. I can't go away because I gotta protect my name and I gotta tell you the truth. And so was it worth losing all the species to your left to pretend that nuclear had some redeeming qualities? That's a pretty important question that everybody needs to ask themselves. The follow to your left actually is understating how, because it's based on venting. This model, by the way, here is 19 days for follow to your bottom right-hand corner. And the species to your left is wonderful, incredible, just absolutely stunning diversity has been exterminated from the entire coast, from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska. But now we know it's all the way down to Mexico. That's an extinction event. Not maybe, not almost. And we're an extinction event if we don't get it in gear and speak about this. And they're poisoning you everywhere you go. They ship the food into your countries ship it to other countries, change the label, and ship it in your country. Now, 50, um, 55 countries banned it from 14 pre prefectures for a decade. Now, you notice it said countries, not Canada. Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days, and so they couldn't ship the food anywhere, only Canada for the first eight or nine years. And, and they know how deadly it is to grow food in nuclear wasteland. Let's, let's not pretend for a second that they don't. This industry has done everything it can to make sure you and all the other species on the planet can't have a future. Almost every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms on top of that. Almost every single one of them. And anyone that's not is now surrounded by radiation from perpetual radioactive fallout. Another study out of France 
was shown 10 million barrels of cesium-137 in North America. That model was only based on nine days, on the 18th of March. So the last reactor blew up on the 6th. It detonated again the uh, following week, but the major loss of the inventories were in six days. And uh, okay, so we'll call it basically. Let's just throw a few more pictures there too before we call it a mix so I can feel it. I'm not going to last much longer here. So they picked up 30 million one ton bags. They sent out around 10 billion pounds, 10 billion pounds just of rice a year from the nuclear wasteland to worldwide. The buildings don't even exist. They've taken great pleasure in making sure you can't have a future. And they worked um, relentlessly to silence any opposition, any facts. And frighteningly, there's really not anybody on the planet right now telling the story. So I'm kind of ran into the ground because we got to try to do try to do five shows a week to keep the story alive. They call me today. Uh, the truck is ready to take you for another test drive, they said. And um, I was just too sick to do anything today. I will go tomorrow regardless of how sick I am. I'll take it out, hook the boat up, and take it for a little run around the roads here to see if it's holding up. Hopefully I can pull it back and resolve it. What a disaster. We got no choice but to succeed, so that's what we'll do. We'll see everybody tomorrow night, hopefully. We'll try to get another little video, or hopefully I'm feeling better. We'll get it a pretty good shot. There's radio silence now in the media on Tritium and Fukushima for three days now. And it was nothing but since July the 13th, right? We barely covered the nuclear cycle because the Fukushima cycle has dominated the news cycle. It looks like they put that baby to rest, and if we don't revive this and have a discussion, it will never ever happen. And we owe that much to ourselves. Have a great night, have a great day. Hope you'll see you more night. Take care of me.